we are back in the mud. Mm. We are back in the dirt Muck. of professional Muck. wrestling at its grimiest mm. as we present. I mean, we don't really, we just talk about it. The Yokohama Amazon River Piranha and Barbed Wire Board Deathmatch between Kendo Nagasaki, not that, no, not that one, the, right, the Japanese, Japanese one, one. and uh, Mitsuhiro Matsunaga. More often talked about than, yeah, than, than actually seen. Watched, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pete, what did you think of this wonderful addition to the Sport of Kings? <laughs> what is the uh, literary device where there's a gun on the wall? There's oh, yeah. There's a revolver on the wall. Is it called the gun on the wall? I can't remember. I can't remember who wrote it, but it's the gun. Is it a gun? Might be a gun. Think it's a gun yeah. on the wall, and it never gets used, or it's about to get used, and everyone's thinking all the time that's going to get used at some point. Yeah. And very much, it's just a couple of wrestlers in a ring having to be very careful at the start because you could smash the big tank in the middle of yeah. the ring. It's yeah. six foot long, <laughs> coffin like fish tank, yes. which is filled with. What looks like toilet water. Um, <laughs> presumably, this is river water because the piranha yeah, right. is a river fish. Mm. So it's quite brackish. Yeah. And uh, there it sits in the middle of the ring. Yeah. And a match is taking place. The only way to win the match is to put your opponent into in the, pr- the yeah. tank of piranhas. Mm. Um, one of those matches where the reality cannot match up no. to the sheer frisson of excitement that you get from the title. The Yokohama. <laughs> even putting the, the place where it's taking place. We're calling it like the Yokohama. You're basically saying something terrible happened here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something appalling and awful. Right. So the Yokohama, Amazon River, Piranha and Barbed Wire Board mm. deathmatch. Again, also helps, you know, if there were other ones, you know, you, <laughs> you know which it was. There was never another one. No. There was never another one. This is a 1996 match from Big Japan and they were a Japanese uh, promotion that specialised in hard Called wrestling. Mm. There'd been an explosion in the popularity of deathmatch wrestling. This is uh, between two guys. One is the Japanese Kendo Nagasaki. Um, surprisingly, the British Kendo Nagasaki is the original Kendo Nagasaki. That's amazing. Really strange, mm. isn't it? Uh, this was a guy called Kazuo Sakurada, and he was a former sumo who debuted in 1971. So he's a 25 year veteran by the time this match rolls around. Mm. He surprisingly spent very, very little of his career in Japan, only the first five years. And he'd gone in 1976 to Stampede in Canada where he worked as Mr. Sakurada. Uh, he was one of the two people who trained Brett the Hitman Hart. No. Um, Brett Hart actually said he was one of the most significant trainers he'd ever had. He was briefly also in WCW as the Dragon Master. He spent mm. six months there in uh, about 1989 to 90. He is one of those guys who never really made it to the main cards. He was always just a henchman. Mm. So he had a very, very unspectacular career. He returned to Japan in 1990 after 14 years away and that was the point that he took the name Kendo Nagasaki. So strange it's so you work under your real name in america for 15 years and you come back and you go i am now taking the name that a british wrestler thought sounded japanese kendo nagasaki um he worked in FMW in hardcore matches and he started up his own promotion, Big Japan, uh, in 1995. He was briefly in SWS, which was a Japanese organization founded by, a, or funded certainly by a spectacle company who were trying to diversify. <laughs> um, they poured loads of money into it, but it was a financial disaster. But they had a working relationship with the WWF. So I have actually seen, I think my first time of seeing this Kendo Nagasaki was in a match against Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And he is the worst Kendo Nagasaki. The, the other Kendo Nagasaki is a really good psychological masked wrestler <laughs> this one you'd think was the original and actually he is by far the worst of the kendo nagasakis he comes out here he he looks like the mascot that like a potato company would have he's like a really smooth or like a peanut without any dimples just really sort of big doughy sort of elmer fudd baby um quite repellent mm. you can hear as this match starts, the clicking of the cameras at ringside. Yeah. And the Japanese wrestling magazines and wrestling magazines in general, internationally, were absolutely spellbound by death matches. <laughs> and things like the gimmick of, you know, a tank of piranhas. Yeah. What are you going to... Are you going to do a profile of Tito Santana? <laughs> or are you going to dedicate three pages to telling people about a match where the object was to put your opponent <laughs> into a tank of piranhas? <laughs> it was very, very good publicity. It's funny how conditioned I am that I was watching this and I was going, this is bad a death match mm. you know there is no one with anything like stuck in their head no one's had a syringe push through their cheek ah. why am i even watching this how dare you claim this is a death match you great <laughs> big lying potato mascot um 
there's a couple of bits which are which are sort of almost charming in it. So <laughs> Kendo throws Mitsunaga into the uh, barbed wire table and then just sort of leans on the table. So it folds him in like a big ice cream sandwich <laughs> and he's all squished between the barbed wire. But it's not particularly bloody. No. It's just sort of like him going, ah, <laughs> like that. And just you stay there, squish you down. They just build the, the tension. You know, you know that tank is there. Mm. And uh, it just... I mean, what a horrible, horrible, <laughs> nasty sport this is. I mean, I, I like I like how it, they kind of like raise the temperature in the room, so to speak, because one of the wrestlers is his, his head is bleeding, mm. and so they dip the head in the water, so the water becomes bloody. Yeah. Lovely, lovely idea. He's dripping blood into it, yeah. and you can see the blood moving yeah. through and, the and, water. And of course that means the piranhas are going to be fierce. <laughs> going to be I had a little Google, and, and apparently piranhas, when alerted, are very orderly. Some of the fish will take a bite and then move aside, so another fish can take a bite. Ooh, oh, very polite. The gentleman of yeah. the coast. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, what's always one of those things, I think, is with things like piranhas, mm. there's always that sense of you've got a tank full of piranhas. That, you know, it's going to be a bit cold in the room. Yeah. You know, they'll warm up when the lights are on. But what they're not going to do is act like piranhas from Doing horror the cartoons. films. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. aren't going. They aren't no. going to do that. No. Um, I believe in this case, what happened is they did. Um, <laughs> so it was a surprise. The match goes on. The guys are sort of like stuck on top of the, the fish tank. Mm. I, that would be the thing that worried me. I'd be less worried about the piranhas than the fish tank giving way. Yes. And yeah, that seems to be. Yeah, they really, yeah, they really put a lot of pressure on it. And I can't, it doesn't look like there's any sort of metal reinforcement. So I'm like, Jesus Christ, guys, you're going to, yeah, it's going to end up with a big shard of glass through your stomach. I'll, I'll tell you one thing that really makes me feel like it sends, it absolutely makes this, my skin crawl mm. is the idea of like dropping a fish tank and trying to pick up the fish and trying in to get time, them somewhere yeah. in time. Mm. Or even worse than that. I mean, being in this match, that collapsing and like squishing them and, and like trying to Slipping get up on, on your them, knees yeah. mm. and, you know, just watching them pop. That is, for me, <laughs> the worst thing imaginable. There's a great little bit just before they do go in the tank uh, where Kendo puts the... Uh, he's sort of got a barbed wire board mm. and he puts it on top of Mitsunaga and then just sort of body slides like a sort of thing. <laughs> the audience laugh. They almost laugh and it's that minute where they go, what are we fucking watching? You know, there's a silly sort of bit where they're like, oh, that, that was funny. That looked silly. And then just go, well, why? Oh, God. And I started thinking, it must be like nervous laughter that you get when there's something awful going on, you know, yes. like in a, in a hostage situation. Mm, and you definitely. just start going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> It's two not very good wrestlers in a quite basic, boring <laughs> death match. They look very bored in it as well. They're just mm. tramping around because they know until we get to the tank, you know, they can't really be doing the end sequence. And, and I'd also think to myself, actually, I'm going to go in here. And what they're going to do is they're going to go to the side. Yeah. There'll be too much movement. They won't like it. Mm. And so, I mean, I'd have been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what happens is Matsunaga goes in and Kendo Nagasaki slaps a, a board on top to hold him in there while he thrashes around. And um, amazing that the promotion didn't end up going into the tank of fish is the man <laughs> in, in charge of the organisation in their first ever Amazon River Piranha death match sort of going I think you should go in I think actually it'd be really it'd be great for your character um, Mitsunaga goes in and uh, all the referees and people you know sort of drag Kendo off and they take away the board that's holding him and they drag him yeah. out and they put him in the corner and they're all swarmed around him and I watched that and I thought clever that's clever mm. because what you're doing is you're shielding the fact that he's totally untouched yeah you know and that he's clearly bled at his chest doesn't he no one knows. <laughs> no one knows. No one Come knows. Come on, Mark. So get with it. Originally, the uh, an American <laughs> reporter who was there said the piranhas took a chunk out of Matsunaga's chest. He looked in terrible pain when he left the arena. <laughs> I don't wish that on anyone, but he chose to wrestle there. And in Japan, had they been fobbed off with a rubbish ending, there would have been a riot. Doesn't mean I condone the actions, said the, uh, the reporter. Um, yeah, he comes out and his chest has been, uh, he's just absolutely bloodied. Uh, and he looks... Yes. I mean, yes, Pete. Yes. We know what wrestling is. <laughs> yes. He must have bladed his chest. He blades himself earlier when they're in the crowd mm. so that they can do the bit where the blood drips into mm. the tank. But he looks a little bit surprised when he comes out. <laughs> so when he's down by the ring, he's looking at his chest and he isn't like going, oh, yeah. he's looking at it like, like really oh my God, what, you know, let me see the damage. <laughs> and there is a part of me that goes, did that happen? <laughs> I don't think it did. But there's a part of me that wishes it had. And that's why wrestling's good, Mark. 
It's the magic. Yeah. It's the David Blaine-esque magic. <laughs> this at the time was a revolutionary <laughs> match. People were like, there will never, ever be anything like this again. Right in some respects, in that nobody has ever done a piranha match no. again. There is more recently a backlash against that, where people are saying, at the time, it felt revolutionary. As a, a guy writing on 411 Mania said, if you take away the piranhas, there's nothing that separates it from 500 other death matches that we've seen throughout the years. Mm. I mean, you don't take away the piranhas then. I mean, that, that <laughs> yeah. seems to me a key part of what the match yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Don't take away the people who are actually, you know, if you take away the hell in the cell. Yeah, you don't, you, it's done now. <laughs> so don't take away the piranhas. The piranhas are the one thing about it that's good. I mean, the, you know, the wrestling is absolutely rubbish. I, I would very much like to know what happened to those piranhas afterwards because I have a feeling they were simply thrown away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Who would have agreed to lend them out and gone, you need to take very special care and and get them back to me mm. if you're going but in between that there's a bit where two great big fat men will roll on them <laughs> I mean <laughs> under hot studio lights yeah it's not ideal is no, it no whoever sold mm. those piranhas is no questions asked piranhas that's <laughs> you know and, they, and they've gone what do you want us to do with the, with the uh-huh. tank and you go I don't fucking care smash it <laughs> what about the piranhas and you go I'll leave it up to you you know and then then you've got that thing of going well I can't get the tank into my tiny Tokyo flat <laughs> so you know this is it you know it was a good match yeah flush them <laughs> <laughs> not even flushed too many of them oh th- just I, slopped out into the gutter and it's the sort of fish tank that will just go back into the front of a fishmonger's display yeah, yeah completely yeah. completely mm. amazing fish we had the other week whole village got hep C. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 